This sode would not be possible without the support of our listeners, patrons, and sponsors. If you'd like to learn more about supporting the 3-Bit Gamer Show, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash 3BG. And a huge thanks goes out to our boss-level patrons, Christopher and Patrick. So can you guys hear me? Uh, no. No, no. can you get closer to your mic? Oh, it's this. Whoa. <laughs> hey. Did you did you put your mic in your mouth? Well, it's either A or B, so what do you want? I guess in your mouth. <laughs> Welcome to the Free Good Radio Show. It's the 3-Bit Gamer Show. I'm JD. This is Peter Schiff. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I just was laughing the whole time. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't have too many lines so you didn't screw it up for us. No. Uh, <laughs> like I do, always. I'm telling you guys, right when we get this this remote recording thing down and we're like, God, we're really doing a good job. That's exactly when we're going to be like, all right, quarantine's over. Let's get back to it. Back in the studio. Live. From the Three Big Gamer Show, the news. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our news this week, as with all weeks, is brought to us by Crave Cookies. Who has all my favorite cookies right now, dude? All my favorite cookies. They've got uh, the chewy churro, which, guys, if you haven't had a chance. If you've ever had a snickerdoodle with literal cream cheese on top, cinnamon cream cheese on top of a snickerdoodle, like, get out. Uh, They've got their lemon bar back, which is awesome, and the Flintstone, which is vanilla dough stuffed and filled with fruity pebbles and covered in (laughs) cream cheese frosting. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. Here's the thing. We're all dealing with all sorts of emotional things. Just treat yourself to a gigantic cookie. It treat really yourself. will be. It's the one bright spot of my day is eating a Crave cookie. So check out Crave. You can find them online at CraveCookies.com. And you can also find them uh, anywhere on DoorDash, Postmates, and Uber Eats uh, in Midvale, Utah. That's CraveCookies.com. All right. Uh, Peterson, kick us off with some news. All right, so the first news comes to us via G2A. If you're <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with G2A, um, they are a game key reseller. Now, for years, people have been saying uh, G2A is just selling stolen keys for games because usually you can get them there at a discount. And they're like, "No, we're not. Screw you guys." Yeah, a and five they- finger discount. <laughs> <laughs> stolen uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know what about. <laughs> um so th- this is this kills me so G2A was so confident that they are not selling stolen keys that they told anyone <laughs> they they offered to pay any studio 10 times the cost of their games if it was sound, found to be selling stolen keys Ten what? times they, they were like, you know what? No, guys, listen, we are not. We will pay you back tenfold if you find us <laughs> with any stolen keys, because we're not. Guys, trust me, trust me, just trust me. We're not. Uh, only one company, <laughs> one company, just one company, took them up on their offer, and this is the guys <laughs> who created Factorio. They're called mm-hmm. Woob Software. Factorio, the immensely popular game. I mean, it's it's medium popular at best. <laughs> uh, Stolen, apparently popular enough to steal, though. Dude, incredible. So they <laughs> they investigated. There was 321 keys that uh, <laughs> Woob, uh, Woob Software Christ. reported as being stolen. And the investigation proved that 198 of those... More than half actually had been stolen. So there was one investigation. They got called out. Their bluff was completely called. 
one investigation, they ended up paying almost forty thousand dollars. So I Dude, am that's awesome. I, I am I am floored that they didn't it seems to me like GTA didn't even at least try to steal one before they made this claim. Seems to me like some middle manager was like so stoked on his own security team that he's like, there's no way, there's no chance in hell. This is like if you own like a Target <laughs> and you're like, oh, there's no way you, anyone could ever steal from Target. And and the, the loss prevention guys are like, oh, boss. Oh, have Dude. you ever st- tried to steal from Target? It's super easy. It's so easy. You should try to steal from Target before you say that you can't steal from Target. And the guy's like, no way, man. There's no way you could steal from Target. It's God, are you kidding me? Dude. Stealing from a stealing a video game, stealing a digital key. It's like the easiest. It's easier than stealing from Target. <laughs> dude, so incredible. I could just see him and they're like, dude, bro, bro. Uh, excuse me. Hey, boss. Uh, I, I really, I, I think a lot of our keys that we're selling are stolen. I know you guys say they're not. He's like, I, we're going to get caught soon. Boss is like, listen, the only way to get get the scent off of our trail is to double down. No. What's 10 times down? Is there a word for that? <laughs> <laughs> get the down. One of the guys in the meeting is like, boss, look, on my phone right now, I just bought 50 stolen keys. Like, it no. just happened. No, we're going to deck it down on this. <laughs> They have no idea. Deck it, it down. If, if we really, <laughs> if we come at this hard, they'll believe us. One company's <laughs> like, yeah, sure. We'll, uh, well, over at, over at Woob, they're like, is there a downside to doing this investigation? <laughs> like, yeah. No, like, at Woob, they're like it. openly encouraging people to steal their keys. They're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, it's, I wish, I, I hope someone doesn't take these unencrypted keys we spilled. We're going to make 10 times on each of them. <laughs> 10 times. Uh, okay. Here's this, okay. here's another one. I love this. Um, Serious Sam 4. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with the Serious Sam series? Like, I've only played the first one. Vaguely. Like back in what? Late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. The fourth installment that I know everyone is just, just, just champing at the bit to get to. Uh, is exclusive. It's an exclusive title. No. For Why? Stadia. I, wait. <laughs> so the only way I can get my fix is to get Stadia. That's what you're well, um, well, it's exclusive <laughs> in 2020. In 2021, oh. it'll be out oh. on all platforms. Oh, okay. I feel like it, putting a game exclusive on Stadia is essentially like it. it, it it's not out yet. It's essentially an unreleased title. Yes. So Serious yes. Sam no, 4 beta. has been delayed to 2021. By the way, <laughs> brilliant move. The company that makes Serious Sam 4, you know, their board is like, guys, we got to get a game out there this year. And their dev team's like, boss, it's not ready. This game's not ready. <laughs> it needs well, to be tested. To and they're like, no, 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 no. I got the best idea. This guy deserves a raise. It's the best idea. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, we will release it. We're we're gonna have Stadia. We're gonna have Google pay us money to have it exclusive <laughs> on their platform. <laughs> and they're like, like, yeah, but it's not gonna be ready. And they're like, nobody's playing Stadia. Google's gonna play it, pay us money. No one's gonna play it. It probably won't even get reviews. Then we'll just release, do the actual release in 2021. No big deal. Are you That's a game happening. studio struggling in 2020 to sell your game? Are you a game studio that needs beta testing on your game? Well, come over to Stadia, where we will pay you, and then our sucker players will pay you to play <laughs> your game. Look, that Stadia, they're like, look, you just come over, you buy the game, and then you pay us so you can play it. <laughs> Wait. Why don't I just Dude, wait till 2021? Sta- Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Stadia owners in 2020 have 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 essentially defined themselves as suckers. They have just signaled to the world that they are marks and they're just <laughs> waiting to be scammed. So this is just one more thing. Stadia is like, just throw it on our Stadia. Google's like, yeah, whatever. The Stadia players are dumb shits. Whatever. Give them serious Sam 4. 
oh, it's not, it's in an unreleased state. Sure, they don't give a shit. These guys will, these guys are hungry for anything. Whatever, just yeah. give them whatever. Give them an alpha game, whatever. I love, I, so usually you'd think, okay, uh, exclusives are usually a good way to drive people to your platform. <laughs> A serious yeah. Sam Four exclusive. <laughs> I mean, they made look, a I, third one. I didn't even know they made a second one. <laughs> there's probably fans out there, right? But I don't think this is going to drive anyone to Stadia. I just don't see it, guys. No. Anyway, some exec made a brilliant move in delaying oh, the yeah. game by selling it to Stadia. Here's my question. My last question out the door. If a game is on Stadia exclusive in a forest, does anyone care? Uh, okay, Peterson, do this next one. I want you to explain this next one because it's fucking hilarious. Okay, so there is a, as you know, racing games, uh, they make a, they the hardcore racing gamers, they use a cockpit. Like, it, it, so it feels like they're in a car, right? Sure. So these are a big deal. So there's a cockpit maker called uh, Next Level Racing. They make immersive cockpits, um, and they are releasing their latest cockpit. I'm saying cock too much. I don't like it. I like it. Good lord. Yeah, just going. Yeah, whatever. I just said it like four times, and it was making me uncomfortable. Um, They're making their racing simulator, and (laughs) they put it out as in the announcement. And it has a logo that looks like it's for Gran Turismo 7. Come on, don't say it looks like. It is literally a a mock-up of a Gran Turismo 7 logo. (laughs) Like, it's the Gran Turismo logo with the number fucking 7 right next to it. Yep. Yeah, no, it's it's Gran Turismo 7. Uh, and And so they put this out there, and people start freaking out. They're like, Wait, Gran Turismo 7? It's coming out. What's going on? You know, what's the what what do they know? And the media kind of puts this out there, right? Because they're like, hear this story. Hey, look, these guys, are they leaking Gran Turismo 7? What's it what's, what's the sitch? And it turns out there's no Gran Turismo 7. Uh, they're not announcing anything. It was an absolute accident, like some I don't know. In turn, they were like a hey, very get, deliberate get, accident. Sure, yes. Get us some logos. Get us some logos. And he's like, I don't know, Gran Turismo. I don't he's give a like, shit. what's Whatever. the what's the last one? What's the next one? Seven. Yeah, we'll put that on there. That'll be cool. Um, <laughs> but the company Next Level Racing comes out. This is the best part. Comes out with a statement that says, "Yes, we 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 made a mistake." Oh, he says by us using a logo that has been misinterpreted by media <laughs> and does not reflect any information on our end there have it's been assumpt- yeah dude, there have you been can- assumptions made in the media that are quite simply untrue what? you can tell they tried so hard not to write the words fake news they were like <laughs> on thesaurus.com trying to figure out a word for fake and a word for news. How can we say fake news without saying fake news? Guys, we didn't make the mistake. You just assume that we made a mistake and then they delete their post immediately. But just because oh, you, you guys media. thought we said this, we're just going to delete it. <laughs> I love that fake news in 2020 has just become like the new 9-11. Like you just say it. When anything doesn't go your way, you just like excuse any of your own mistakes you're like yeah it's fake news oh yeah we can say that we can just say fake news president says it all the time i can say fake news i don't give a fuck that's fake news (laughs) that's fake news that's not real yeah it gives you you this like we did it fake news (laughs) oh that thing you just wrote about us creating that logo yeah that's fake news you guys just got jammed also screw you guys you know what screw you guys for actually calling us out on this (laughs) That does not feel good. <laughs> Dude, I just feel like the fake news like excuse is must be so addicting because it just gives you this like godlike control <laughs> over your own reality in which you can just be like, oh no, that's fake. And then you're like, wow, did I just make that fake? Did I 
that wasn't real. The logo thing, that didn't even happen. I just said it was fake and it didn't happen. We deleted it. We said <laughs> it wasn't fake. It's done. It's done. So my question is here, since they reported, so so let's see, to, to follow the, the what happened, they created the logo, media, and quite frankly, just fans on Twitter started asking about it, and then the company came out and said that was fake news, and now the media then reported on that. So, <laughs> is, the, is the latest media report itself fake news? Is it fake news reporting on fake news? I don't know. Let's check I, to see if they uh, – what if they deleted their latest post that explained <laughs> it? That would be my favorite. Dude, that would be the most next-level shit move is delete the post claiming fake news and then call the latest media reports on your post calling fake news fake news. It is a vicious cycle. <laughs> and That's how you win. Honestly, honestly, this is job security for the writers over at Kotaku. They're like, boss, they're just going to keep feeding it to us. This cycle is going to go on for the next two or three great. years. Boss is like, I guess we got to keep going. We can't st- we can't be the ones who stop. <laughs> I guess they have to. They're just playing this game of chicken. Who's going to quit first? Who's going to stop writing this stupid story about a Gran-, Gran Turismo logo that no one gives a shit about? By the time the, by the time they're done, Gran Turismo Nine has come out. <laughs> we still don't know what's real anymore. Like no one has any fucking idea. Um, okay, here's something that's definitely real. Peta is oh, yeah. is looking Those out guys. for real things and doing a real thing because everyone knows Peta does good work for real animals. Oh mm-hmm. wait, uh. <laughs> According to this article in Global News, uh, PETA is protesting against the fake fish museum. So I guess when you fi- when you catch a dope fish in Animal Crossing, you can display it in a museum. And PETA is protesting said museum. Get out of <laughs> in here. In game. In game. It says PETA shared footage on, when- on Twitter Wednesday of an apparent in-game <clears throat> protest outside Blathers Museum. Mm. A virtual museum run by a cartoon owl in the game. <laughs> Incredible. So dumb. So Here's dumb. the thing. So I Googled this because I had to know. Did PETA protest Red Dead Redemption? If you guys remember Red Dead Redemption 2, especially that had like where you could skin animals and like whatever. First, but whatever it was in Red Dead Redemption 1, there was only one animation for skinning an animal, and it it, it consisted of your character plunging a knife into whatever creature. It could be a rabbit or a moose. He's still Mm going to plunge the knife into it like he's making an Aztec sacrifice. And then he's just going to saw through it like he's trying to cut down a tree. And PETA at no point protested this game where you could literally saw animals in half. Just Just because. Just fuck. Just for fucking fun. Like, it had no bearing on the game. But Animal Crossing has a fish museum. And they're like, all right, this is it. This is where we're <laughs> putting our... the line here. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, the PETA video, it says, Blathers encourages players to take fish out of their natural habitats so he can trap them in tiny takes. The caption <laughs> oh, PETA video no. says, canceled. <laughs> they want to cancel Blathers. An owl. Dude. A cartoon owl. Cancel the fucking owl. <laughs> <laughs> not <in> my watch <laughs> here's the thing so many people are indoors these days and not out disturbing the wildlife they don't know what to protest and they're like you know what does not matter have you heard about blathers have you g- <laughs> <laughs> this this motherfucker blathers i swear to god he's like animal hitler <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're probably just all on their Zoom meetings, like, "Hey guys, we need a we need a protest. Anybody got any ideas?" And one of them's like, "Oh, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing," and the other one's like, "You bastard what monster! Crossing? What <laughs> crossing? animal? Animal what? <laughs> yeah, what? Crossing? Oh my goodness! They immediately expelled him from PETA." And he's like, I was just, I'm just a volunteer. I don't, what do you mean? <laughs> there better be sweaters on those animals. Freaking black bastard. Here's the thing. PETA has to be the absolute, like, most, like, toothless organization out there. Like, they don't accomplish fucking 
anything. They just like kind of make jackasses out of themselves. They're like Greenpeace, where it's just like, let's just make a lot of noise and give everyone that's like on the opposite side of our argument a ton of ammo to attack people that believe what we believe. Like they are just like a jackass organization. How the fuck? They're like, well, we can't we can't help real animals. You know, we've been around for 40 years and we haven't helped a single animal. Like we put a lot of dogs down. Uh, maybe we could go digital. Maybe PETA's future is digital animals because we have had bup kiss luck with real ones. <laughs> Dude, this rest of this story just kills me. They built a guide of how to play the game, which uh, that tells them to avoid pretty much most of the activities. No digging up clams, <laughs> catching bugs, no fishing. <laughs> Do not build a doghouse. And don't wear any virtual clothing that features fur or leather. Wait, you can't build a doghouse, so your dog has to sleep outside so PETA is happy? Oh, like it's your dog? Please, <laughs> JD. Listen, your code dog is a person, too. Oh, I'm sorry. You think that you can own an animal? Listen here, animal Hitler. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I could read this story and talk about this story for the next two hours. This Dude. is so crazy. Dude, I don't even want to get into PETA, but I just love that they continue to be a mockery. And literally the only time you ever see PETA in the news anymore is when they are making asses of themselves. Like they don't do anything <laughs> worthwhile anymore. Dude, it's, it's incredible. incredible. Um. All right, Peterson, you do this last one. This is solid. <clears throat> okay, let me pull this up. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so as you know, there's an <laughs> Epic Game Store is doing uh, their sale. They're doing their spring sale or whatever they're calling it. They're doing a sale right now. Um, a lot so. of good games for a good price and... They start off, you know, they're like, you know what? Here you go. Here's a ten dollar coupon, ten dollar off any purchase. Uh, fourteen. I think it's fourteen ninety nine or more. And unlimited coupons. You buy a game, bam, you get another coupon, ten dollars off your next purchase, right? And so, uh, it's just this, you know, that's a pretty great deal, a ten dollar off coupon, right? You can use that anytime. But <laughs> they rigged their own system. The coupon will not work for The Witcher 3 because <laughs> they Jeez. lowered the price by one cent to fourteen ninety eight. <laughs> it's so obvious. It, they didn't even go down to like thirteen ninety nine. They're like, uh, one penny each shit. And you're like, okay, first of all, <laughs> why would you ever price a game at fourteen ninety eight? That doesn't make sense. Because you're Walmart. Otherwise, no, you don't have a real reason. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. I the funny thing is, before we even saw this story, I noticed that, and I was like, because I was looking through, and I was like, okay, what games can I get a good deal on? And I noticed The Witcher Three in the sale, and noticed you couldn't pick it up on using your coupon, which is crazy. So I don't know what what are they doing just a penny is it because the witcher didn't want to put their game on sale because i'm pretty sure the witcher 3 goes on sale 25 All times time. a year yep <laughs> for five dollars or less like for real I, I, I got it for five bucks yeah and that's the thing is like I, if this was a gay if this was like I, they can't be making that much money off this like is it even worth the effort of going in and changing the price of it like did that no. save you guys money <laughs> it duped a few poor souls who clicked that buy button a little too quick that's what i happened. guess so so it looks like the original price is 49.96 and they discounted it 70 percent off but even that 49.96 is just bizarre like, oh, why yeah. would you use that number? Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> guys, before you click that buy button in the Epic Game Store, make sure your coupon works. Actually, I almost got burned. Uh, this was crazy. I went in the Epic Game Store to use my coupon, <clears throat> was looking around, and there was a game that I talked about before that I was interested in uh, called Griftlands. Dude, I just and, bought that. And on the Epic Game Store? Yeah, like, do you use like, your coupon? 
Like 30 <laughs> minutes ago. I did I use my you. coupon. <laughs> that, so I went and used my coupon. I clicked buy. And I guess I had punched in one of the numbers wrong on my credit card. And so it said, oh, there's an error. So I was like, oh, crap. I went to go buy it again. Almost purchased it before I noticed the coupon wasn't there anymore. When I went to apply the coupon, it said it was already on another purchase. The purchase that didn't go through. Uh, and so I did have to like go through a couple back doors to get my coupon back. Anyways, guys, before you hit buy on the Epic Game Store, just make sure that coupon's activated. Because you're definitely going to get bait and switched. Oh, <laughs> big time. I almost got it. All right, let's do this. Kudos, I'm yours. All right, kudos is our positivity segment. We'd like to give a shout out to something we're digging. And Peterson, you won't shut up about this, so why don't you I tell won't. everyone about it? <laughs> so I found a show that I just really like. <clears throat> I get excited when I find a show that I can watch with my kids around. Because most of the shows I like, it's like, no, guys, don't watch this with your wife or kids, right? It's like Game of Thrones or something like that. Um, this one is. So I found a show called Worth It. It's on uh, Hulu, and the episodes are short. I'm talking like 15, 20 minutes. So I've actually blown through like four seasons of this show already because it's, it, I mean, they're just real fast. But it's a food show. You know I love food shows. And what the premise of the show is, it, it's filmed almost, it's filmed like a YouTube show, to be honest. It is a YouTube show. Oh, so it it's started a out show. as a YouTube show. And because I had Jenna watch it and she's like, oh, yeah, I've seen this on YouTube before. So it was a YouTube show published by BuzzFeed and then they moved it to Hulu. Okay, that makes sense. Because that's, that's how it feels. So you can watch it on Hulu or YouTube is what I'm getting at. So, yeah, watch it on either. But yeah, it feels like a YouTube show, but it's it's these two dudes and their cameraman that go uh, go around and they choose a food item. So the first episode, I think, is sushi and they they eat three di- sushi at three different price points They're Now, they're in L.A. and so most of the stuff's in L.A., but then like the later seasons, they're like going to New York and uh, Japan Seattle. and going all over the place. Seattle, yeah. So what they'll do is they'll eat sushi at three price points, a cheap, a medium, and a, like the most expensive one they can find. And then they try them out, and then they say, well, you know, at the end, which one's the most worth it. But that's not – the fun of it is just seeing these places because they go to good places and seeing the, like, really good food. And you know I love watching that stuff. So I just cannot get enough. Uh, it inspired some of my, like, cooking ideas for – uh, quarantine cooking. Um, so I'm loving it. I think, I think the show is, it's fun. Like the hosts make it fun enough. Uh, it's fun. It's, I, you know, it's a food show. So you get to watch awesome food and, uh, yeah. So I think worth it is worth it. Worth it. Dude. I liked it. I, I watched just, I watched the, on your recommendation, I watched the entire first season. <clears throat> which and did you mention this they're only like 15 minutes long each yeah episode. they're so short so that's my favorite part of it is like right like a lot of times when you watch like for example uh triple d diners drive-ins and dives don't get me wrong i love the show i think it's incredible and i have very little ill to say about it but sometimes it does get long in the tooth yep. because he's like well i have to spend a whole episode here i have to go into every single item when they show up and worth it they're like here's the thing we're eating we ate it we're done and they move on and you're like, cool. They yeah. went into every part of it. They discussed it and they moved on. And I kind of like that because mm-hmm. because of a YouTube, it's a YouTube series. It doesn't have the same uh, formulaic restrictions that a TV series might, which is like, oh, yeah, they have it this long and it has to have space for commercial breaks. It has to be this. It has to be that. They're just like, yeah, go in there, eat out and then bail. And that's like exactly what you get. So for Jen and I, it was very bingeable because right when you get tired of it, you're like, okay, I'm sick of learning about sushi. I don't want to hear about sushi. They're like, okay, cool. We're doing burgers now. Hamburgers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I, I like worth it. Uh, a worst case scenario, it's 15 minutes. So to test it out, I would recommend everyone yep. just get in and out. And they change in the first season. They change the host, the co-host like halfway through or a couple episodes in the two and episodes the, in the new guys, even better. 
Oh, he's way better. You, I liked him a lot. <laughs> way better. So if you watch the first two and you're like, uh, the, the white guy's kind of a dork, they get another white guy and he's less of a dork. So, But he's like a different type of dork. He's yeah, like and a he's grumpy dork. He reminds me of Hamill, who we've had on the podcast before. <laughs> Just kind of like a grumpy dork. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, my, I have kudos too. I can't believe I haven't brought this up yet. Uh, I can't believe we haven't talked about it. So the creator, uh, the one of the co-creators of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, uh, has a new animated show. It's a Hulu exclusive, which you can watch whether or not you have the Hulu, Hulu ad version or the ad free version. Uh, it's called Solar Opposites. It is very derivative of Rick and Morty. Honestly, like, you go into it, and you're like, oh, it's a sci fi family uh and it's the exact same animation style as Rick and Morty. A lot of the exact same like this. writing. <laughs> same type of humor. Same voices. Same main yep. characters. And you're like, the first episode, you're like, fuck, what a... This just feels like a rip, Rick and Morty episode ripoff or like a riff it's of like an episode? a side story. <laughs> yeah! And you're like, what the fuck? So whatever it's you know it's justin roiland and like i like the comedy of rick and morty and i like the the animation so i was like eh, whatever i'll watch it jen and i watched a few episodes dude guys it's legit like it's <laughs> it's it's really good and it is very different than rick and morty and i mean there is this like it the weirdest thing ever so i don't want to spoil it but there's this side story so the the main the crux of the series is that there is a alien family that their home world was destroyed and they crash landed on earth and they're just trying to like make their way while they have this thing called a pupa which is like another little alien that's eventually supposed to evolve eat our whole eat all of earth and like terraform it so it fits the alien home world but in the meantime while they wait for that to happen they're just sticking around so one of the uh, one of the aliens has this habit of shrinking humans that annoy him and then storing them in this wall <laughs> in his room, just like gerbils, I guess. And so you're like, oh, haha, it's like a one off joke. And then like three or four episodes in, they start going into the world that's developed, which is kind of like a Mad Max style world oh that's developed in the wall of shrunken humans. And eventually I turned to Jenna on like episode six. And I was like, dude, I kind of want Justin. I just kind of want this whole series to be about what's going on in the wall now, because it was so <laughs> fascinating. And you're like, shit, I don't even care about the aliens anymore. I just want to know what's going on with the shrunken humans. And then the next episode, it was just the wall. That was it. There was literally <laughs> no aliens in it at all. There was none of the main characters. It was just, a sh it was the weirdest thing because it was at the point where they got you to the point where you're like, this is all I really want to watch. And then they just give you a full episode of it. Nice. It was the most surreal TV watching experience I've had in a while. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, it's, it's, it's interesting. If you are a fan of Rick and Morty, it is a must watch. I will say as, as a caveat, there are times when this is 10 times more intense than the most intense episode of Rick and Morty. I mean it. There are like some fucked up parts in it there is extreme violence there is a lot more sex than there is in rick and morty it is very much as far as they can push the boundaries of like tv content uh and so just know that it's not like rick and morty is very safe for work uh or very kid friendly but this is even more so so just so you are aware of it <laughs> just know that going into it yeah yep um Okay, that brings us to my favorite sound clip on the board. Oh my god, the first impression rose. <laughs> Hold on. Guys, I oh love my it. god, the first impression rose. I just had to play it twice. Guys, we have some first impression roses for you. That is, we have all been playing some new games, some dope games, and we want to talk about them. But I am so freaking curious peterson and aaron played a new game without me <laughs> and apparently it's not the best so tell me all about crucible boys <laughs> yeah yeah go for go for it so peterson. aaron actually told me i said i when i messaged aaron about the episode i said hey what are you playing and he mentioned crucible 
And I remember hearing about that, and I said, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to go check that out. That's He's like, it's free to play. So I downloaded it, and we made the plan to play together. And uh, it didn't go well. I think Dude, so. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It, it frustrates me so much because it's yep. it's a cool concept, like it has mm-hmm. everything you want into. So I guess overview of what Crucible is. Yep. Um, it's it's kind of like a battle arena game. Um, yeah. there's there's so like, like Overwatch, ish. Yeah. So there's yes. so it's a little bit of like Overwatch, Apex, and and that kind of um, that kind of style. But it's it's a little bit cartoonish with I don't fantasy. I don't know. I don't really know what's going and on. And it's not like it's about. solely a battle royale because there were other game modes as well. There's like capture points and stuff like that. But yeah, the characters in it that you choose have abilities like you would get in Overwatch and Apex. Uh, it's smaller. So when I, we say battle royale, there was there's like 16 people in a game. So we played an eight on eight mode. And then we played a two uh, two v two v two v two v two v two mode. Yeah, okay. that one's more of a battle royale because yep. once your team is eliminated, then you're you're done for the match. <laughs> um, and in the eight versus eight, you get a respawn, and you're trying yep. to capture specific points. It's kind of like uh, holding <laughs> uh, what five different points on the map: A, B, C, D, E, F, or whatever. Okay. And so you're trying to hold those and then defeat the enemy at the same time. And then there's another mode that's uh capture the hive or something like that there's going to be hives that will pop up periodically on the map and you have to rush to defeat the the monster and then collect its heart and so you have two teams that are fighting over this monster um but the problem with that one was we didn't play it with uh peterson and i we didn't play it but it's it's a huge map and it's only 4v4. Majority so... of the time, you're just running around. Like, Wait, it's a killing... giant map and it's 4v4? Yeah, it's it's yeah. a huge mistake. Yeah, for, for that <laughs> map. Yeah, it's so horrible. I was so bored. Like, I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> and so they do have monsters that will pop up. It's kind of like a PvE kind of experience where you shoot the monsters, you collect essence, and then you... That's like your ex you level experience, up. and then you level okay. up. Yeah, so each level will give you a better bonus to your character. So, uh, so you're kind of doing that, and then occasionally you'll run across a person, and then you'll get owned in the face because you don't know how to shoot <laughs> the other person. Because you spend the whole game; it's like a walking sim, dude. Uh, it's it's. Oh, and so, yeah, Peters and I were playing, and there's a stupid little rat bastard that will just <laughs> bounce around That's the and only way shoot you in the him. face. He's like a, the, a little <laughs> teeny rat guy. He's like a little ball, like more like a gerbil. His hitbox right? is like an inch. I don't understand. <laughs> and he jumps around. like He flies around. I sat there and shot. Okay, so here's the thing, though. I <laughs> shot the enemies so many times, I never felt like I did any damage no and i'm damage. not saying like i i wasn't doing damage like it wasn't hurting them very bad like i felt like i was doing zero damage i i don't i, don't, I didn't understand if i was doing something wrong like i hitting them i can see it hitting them and their hit points are not going away and nope. i was like is there some shield situation i don't know about is there like a a regen buff that they've picked up somewhere? I don't know what's happening, but but we played three games, and between the two of us, we had a cumulative two kills. And there were guys, yeah. this little rat guy, who was getting like seven, eight kills a game. I didn't understand. I, so the game yeah. is missing some key elements. Uh, the You can mark a spot on the map to go to. But it's very tiny and almost, I mean, I'd mark a spot and couldn't I couldn't find even see it where yeah. I marked. And, uh, and then you, there's a, the map is okay, but it didn't really distinguish which one I was. So I could see my whole team, their little icons and where they were going. And for a newbie into the game, I, I, I can't even remember what my character looks like. And I'm like, wait, 
which one of those is me. I didn't know which marker was mine on the mini map. So I still didn't know where I was. And then uh, like, there's no little mini map down on your screen as you play, like you'd get in uh, like Warzone or Fortnite or anything like that. There's no little mini map. Um, that's what so the... if you ping somewhere, you can't like really tell where you, what you've pinged, how to get there. The communication in game is really weak. Um, they're, the characters are imbalanced, very poorly balanced. Uh, like they're fun to play. All the ones I played were fun, but I got destroyed by like the two OP characters who everyone else was apparently was playing who would just zip around me and kill me when I couldn't even hit them. Uh, I don't know. It just seems like a fun concept. The characters seemed fun. Um, the game, you know, played okay, but they're just, it's like they guessed at, they didn't take all the experience <laughs> from all the other online play- games. They didn't talk to anyone who's ever played an online game. They just kind of made all of the wrong mistakes. And this is uh, Amazon games. So Amazon is, you know, this is one of their, their biggest, their first big budget game. Um, and so, yeah, they just missed you know, and I feel like this game could be good in six months or so with some a real uh, overhauling of a whole bunch of things, some retooling. But I mean, all in all, I did not have a fun time. We played three games. It was probably 45 minutes maybe of playing, 40 minutes of playing. And I just didn't have fun. You know, Ugh. if you can't kill well, somebody early on, then you're just it's not good. Yeah, See, like, that. Go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Oh no, it's. It seemed like they had a really cool idea. I like the idea of having a battle royale with other stuff that you're trying to accomplish, other than just trying to kill other people. Like I like the the PVE element, and you're capturing points, and you're leveling up your guy. So it had kind of that uh, like League of Legends kind of thing. Like you're trying to level up to get stronger to defeat other people. But yeah, just the combat sucked. It was horrible. <laughs> that was the biggest. So when you guys invited me to to play, I jumped on and downloaded the game. And in so doing, I read some of the reviews because I saw that the reviews were kind of middling. And that was the biggest complaint that I saw across all the reviews is that the combat was super unsatisfying. And I was like, what does that mean? So I dug into more reviews because I was like, I don't know what that means. Apparently, a very common complaint that sounds like what you guys are talking about is that the Guns don't feel like they have any impact. Yep. So yeah, that's, like that's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're shooting someone, that's what you guys keep saying over and over again is that, oh, I didn't feel like I was doing anything. I don't think they have that in the game yet. So, you know, when you shoot someone in Call of Duty, it makes that little click. Yeah. That noise or like a bullet in in Destiny will hit someone and it'll make like an obvious noise or there'll be a hit indicator or some games that throw like Borderlands where numbers are spent falling off people while you Blood shoot them ladder this anything. game has none of that Nothing. so i think when you guys say you know it could be good if they clean up some of those things adding adding a noise to a hit like when when a, hit, when a bullet hits someone that's pretty easy like that's not a big deal um but it does sound like it, there's a lot of those and they just kind of add up so first impression rose this is a free to play game would you guys still say hold off though <laughs> wait, wait for it. Because I played it now, and to be honest, I have so many other good games that I'm playing right now. Yeah. Like, what's my incentive to jump in and play this again, right? Uh, yeah, done. So if yep. you haven't played it, wait. Wait to see if it gets better. I know it's free, but what you'll do if you play it now is sour yourself to the game forever. Right, and so that's why. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. Wait, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'll ever go back, even if they do fix it. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I better. I... Down, I better. I better uninstall it before it takes up too much room on my computer. Um, do you, Peterson? What do you want to do next? Do you want to do Rune Terra or do you want to do Spellbreak? Let's do Rune Terra because that was another one Aaron and I played. Okay, do it. <clears throat> So Aaron also told me he was playing Legends of Runeterra, which again I knew was coming out, but I'd been so preoccupied with Warzone that I just hadn't bothered. Legends of Runeterra is Riot Games foray into uh, like a collectible card game. 
Uh, and so I jumped into this and I've only played a little bit, probably like an hour or so enough to know that I still suck, but I'm understanding the concepts of it. Here's what I'll say. First impression. I actually like, like doing the tutorial, you're seeing the characters from league of legends. And that's the one thing that I really appreciated league of legends for is they had fun to play characters. The lore didn't make sense. That was all nonsense, but the characters were well-built and fun. So you see these characters, and they're like, they have little dialogue, and you're like, oh, yeah, that does fit in with something that Garen would say, right? And and so I thought that was done well. The game looks good. Uh, the tutorial, uh, believe it or not, for Riot Games, I felt like it explained it very well because it does play a tad bit different than other uh, card games that I've played. So they, they kind of held your hand long enough to for you to understand what you were doing. Um, the uh, uh, Let's see, what else? I, I didn't play enough to like dive into it, but my, f- my full first impression was that I got just enough into it to make me want to go play Hearthstone. <laughs> and that's exactly what Aaron said to me. He's like, yeah, well, maybe we want to play Hearthstone. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to play Hearthstone now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I want to play yeah. this game, but I want it to be better. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it definitely has a lot to kind of, to uh, I don't know, iron out. Maybe the, the mechanics are super cool. Uh, I don't think it's balanced very well. Because uh, so I, I don't like to build decks just out of, my imagination i like i just steal decks from online. same and so um i found a budget deck that was uh seemed pretty good and so i i was able to make it with very little effort on on my part as far as uh cards that i had so um and it just dominates it it is so broken um that i i feel like there's something really wrong with the game so the deck that i was using specifically went it was all to the face like whatever damage you had you were doing it to the face and there was no champions whatsoever in the deck oh my gosh um Hmm. and so um i was destroying people on turn like five oh my gosh um yeah (laughs) like can you explain the like the way the turns work and the way the gameplay works yeah, so it's it's definitely different than uh, Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone. That you um, at the start of the game, you uh, you you can mulligan whatever your hand. I think I forget how many cards you draw. It's only like a few. It's it's um, not a lot. Yeah. So anyway, so and then um, the coin will go to uh, the battle coin will either go to you or the your opponent, and you can only attack when you're the battle coin is on you. So um, say if it was on me, I can play a character as an action. My opponent has the opportunity to play a card for an action. And then for my action, uh, I can attack or play another action. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you attack, that opponent cannot, can no longer play cards in order to defend. So on my turn, if I start with a character and it, the battle coin is on me, I can immediately attack without the the opponent responding to to my attack. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, so when you when you attack, it's a it's a one character to one character attack defend. Like there's no double double character uh, defending one character. Like they on, attack the uh, character like right across from them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit like Hearthstone, a little bit, um, because but but you're not you're not attacking a specific character. It's kind of Magic the Gathering where you're you're just attacking, and they they uh, assign a defender to that attack. Mm-hmm. Um, but so it's it's kind of interesting. You, you may ha- definitely have some interesting choices as far as uh, how the actions go. Uh, when you can end your turn and um, it's it's interesting but it just has a lot of stuff it just needs to iron out for the cards Um, it definitely has a long way to go well i think this is a genre that has some heavy hitters in it and heavy hitters that have been around longer it's a hard to get into genre because 
you have to do something so unique that doesn't make you make the players want to go over and play Hearthstone, right? <laughs> because because Hearthstone has lots of wacky mechanics, so many different types of things you can do, crazy cards, different game modes. They've got a lot because they've been around there around for a while. They know what they're mm-hmm. doing. <clears throat> and so jumping in new, while I can applaud their effort and some of their game design decisions, at the same time, it wasn't better than some of those other games. And so it made me, if I'm going to play a CCG, I want to just go play a good one. Look, yeah. man, Hearthstone came out six years ago and Lee and riot games sat on that sat on this you know i i assume they had some inkling that they wanted to do this at least a couple years ago but they didn't move quickly enough and now it's like kind of passed because quite frankly when hearthstone was hot there was opportunity for other games other card games like this but now it's kind of cooled just like in the moba space if anyone should know this it's riot games because you had a period where there was League of Legends and Dota, and then there was Smite, there was Hots, there was the the uh, DC one, there was 50,000 MOBAs, and then the trend died off, and now what do people play? It's Dota and League of Legends, and that's yep. it. And that's the story with our, with these types of card games now. It's like you guys missed the boat, and then you built like a big ship to try to catch up, but it doesn't matter because nobody wants to ride it anymore. I just I thought it was really weird when they announced this. They're like they announced this and they announced their other game, which is both of them just trying to chase trends that have passed. And they're just too from in my opinion, they're too big and they're too bulky and they're too set in their ways. Riot Games is to produce something that, like Peterson said, is innovative enough to stand out in this space. Yeah, this game definitely, like Peterson said, made me want to go play Hearthstone. Then Hearthstone made me want to go play Magic the Gathering Arena. And <laughs> now I've been playing Magic the Gathering Arena ever since. Yep. Um, okay, so it sounds like we had two first impressions that no that didn't no one got the rose. No one got the first impression rose. However, yeah, like, I would was like a heart, was a no. Rune Terra is yep. like a I don't know. It's like a it's like a petal. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, what they should start doing the in rose. The Bachelor. They send you home, but they give you a pedal if you're like not hideous. <laughs> if you're like horrible, you're going home, give bitch. You the stem with lots of thorns on it. <laughs> That's you what Chad bastard. gets. Here That's what go. the Chads get. Is just the stem with this. thorns. <laughs> <laughs> dude that's my new thing you know you ever see that prank where kids go to like uh like a mcdonald's drive through and they order an ice cream cone and when they hand it to them they grab the cone by the ice cream <laughs> yes <laughs> and then the, the drive through person looks at him like what the fuck that's how that's how i want people in the bachelor to start so you hand them the rose <laughs> and the guy just, just reaches it out and grabs the- it by the top <laughs> just demolishes just- the flower <laughs> The girl grabs it. She's like, ah, thank you. And then she's standing in the line with the other girls and she's, they're all holding it by the, the, the stem and she's just holding it by the top. Like she's popping it by the top. <laughs> she's like, I don't know. I'm just a different girl. I'm just a different kind of girl. Um, so I, <laughs> I want to give my first impression rose to spell break. This is a game that Silverthorn uh, gave the us speaking code. Speaking of roses and thorns, Silverthorn gave us oh. uh, the codes for this. Oh, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Full circle. That was the whole point. This is a very long con, but it was all just for <laughs> it was all for Silverthorn all along. Uh, but Silverthorn sent us a few beta codes to play this. Um, this is Spell to Break. It is. I actually don't know who made this game. Um, it's a new uh, B uh, battle royale game. It is proletariat, proletariat Inc. Communists. Yeah, I'm right um, now. Oh, okay, proletariat. Oh yeah, you think you think workers are worthwhile? No. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it is. To do. It's propaganda. It's propaganda. Workers are just meat for the grinding machine. Um, so <laughs> Spellbreak is. A battle royale game, if you guys are familiar with uh, Fortnite or PUBG. However, instead of guns, you have spells. Magic. I know, it's a twist. 
Um, and it's really Peterson struggled with it when he played it the first time on uh, control or on mouse keyboard, and keyboard because it keyboard. really does excel on controller. And it's awesome. It feels awesome on a controller because you have your your primary spell, which has like a secondary ability on your right trigger. And then your second ability is on the right bumper. And then you can pick up and swap out your other secondary spell with all these other spells that are lying around in the same way you may pick up a gun in Fortnite or PUBG. You pick up a secondary spell and that's your L trigger and your L bumper. The spells are so cool because if I throw down like a a flaming wall spell, so I pick this fire spell, which lets me cast fireballs. And then my special that has a cooldown is a wall of fire. Peterson can come along and throw a bunch of like a poison uh, splash poison. And now that wall of fire is a poisonous wall of fire. And the art style is kind of Fortnite. It's very cartoonish. Yep. And so instead of like, oh, a hyper realistic poison wall, it's like a cartoony poison wall you'd see in like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. It's awesome. (laughs) It is so fun. Um, The movement, the to solve the kind of the movement issue with vehicles or in Fort, uh, all the jumping is like when you click jump, you essentially like Hulk jump, like you jump so high and far. And there's no fall damage. So like, thank God. Yeah. So so you have like this mana pool, and if you hold down your jump, you pull from the mana pool to just like burst yourself into the air. So you can just keep levitating. You just keep going higher in the air, and so it, it's a mobility based uh, battle royale because everyone is jumping around, flying, zipping around. So it is highly mobile. All the characters. So it looks like Proletariat was founded in 2012 by some people from Harm- Harmonix, Turbine, and Insomniac Games. So it sounds like they've got a pretty great pedigree of of people that had a lot of experience. So this isn't just like an indie title of people just making it up as they go, which I kind of felt. Um, what was that? What was that uh, one that I played, Peterson, with Trent, that fantasy battle royale one? Oh gosh, what was that called? I can't remember. It was a, it was a fantasy. Yeah. I thought I thought this one was like a better version of that. That game was fun, yes. but it just wasn't. It, yeah, it was missing something. No, and this one has a lot. When you say missing something, I feel like this is like they've got a lot of the core stuff. Realm in it. Royale. Like, Realm Royale. Yeah, Realm Royale very much felt like an early indie title. Pro, this this game feels pretty fleshed out. Like S- Spellbreak feels like they've done a really solid job. Um, and it's also got that feeling of you jump into a game and you're like, dude, I'm doing really well. And then every once in a while, someone comes along and just smashes you. And you're like, it's kind of like that early gameplay where you could actually be one of the better players if you, you know, put a lot of time in because everyone's just kind of new to the game and they're kind of figuring it out. Um, Ultimately, yeah, I I think, like I said, I I think it's finally a fresh take on the Battle Royale genre. I think every latest, uh, I think Apex and Call of Duty did nothing new. Apex had the zip line. They had a zip line. It was a whole game, and the only thing new they did was a fucking zip line. (laughs) Call of Duty has done, like negative new things they have like brought nothing to the table the gulag they've Uh, got the gulag oh that's fair okay the gulag's (laughs) tight the gulag's tight but everything else call of duty is almost indistinguishable from PUBG, other than obviously it's call of duty so it's superior gameplay and the guns are way fun to shoot um (laughs) are you going to defend the gameplay in PUBG, peterson you solid gameplay i've got 800 hours into it so (laughs) Yeah, it's a sunk cost fallacy at this point. But I feel like Spellbreak is really something new. I like that it's not guns, but it's still really satisfying. I think the spell take is awesome. It's going to feel really fun for anyone that has that's really into high fantasy type games where you're not shooting constantly, but where you're casting spells. And quite frankly, because as if you guys remember, I said it feels better on a controller. Almost all the spells, except for like a couple handful of sniper spells, most of the spells are kind of area of effect, like splash damage spells. So you don't have to be like hyper accurate. 
which is another thing I kind of liked. So, you, you know, every spell you're casting, most for the most part, is exploding in an area. So you don't have to hit someone with a perfect headshot every time to do some damage. So Yeah, and you're, you're yeah, not going to get sniped, right? That's that's one of the things that makes some Battle oh. Royales game annoying. You're running yes. around. You've played for 15 minutes. You run to a spot. Some ace <laughs> freaking shoots you from a, a building. You can't see him. He can that's see it. you. Headshot, you're dead. That's and you didn't know happen what happened. This game. Yeah. Uh, my 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 quick impression: This game was very fun to play. You felt more than any battle royale. You felt cool playing the game. Like you felt powerful. Yep. You land hard. Like in Realm Royale, had that same type of thing, like superhero landing. You follow the sky. You land hard. Uh, but you the the uh, ability to kind of switch out the different moves you have. Uh, based on what you're finding, because you go around and loot and you're finding armor and health spells and, you know, your equipment that will make your kind of give you some buffs. Uh, I liked all of that. It was hard, I'll say, uh, because I'm so used to my I excel at like the slower aspect of battle royales, like far away shooting yeah. um, with an AR or something. If you start shooting someone from far away, they're going to be on top of you in three seconds. Because like I said, the mobility in this game is so big. But uh, like Crucible, the mobility was really bad. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like a lot of high spots you could get to. Uh, I had a sniper character, for example, and I couldn't snipe anyone. I'd start shooting someone with that little rat guy, and he'd be on top of me doing melee damage uh right away and my character's a sniper like what what can i do right and so yeah. this game doesn't have that you have abilities that can shoot far close up abilities you've got and you can switch those up if you want to get away you can probably get away cuz your jump is huge you can you have dashes so it it really and felt there's fun invisibility to run there's mm -hmm. there's like speed boosts it's because it's fantasy it can be anything like they can just add all sorts of crazy wax spells my only I also complaint like... i have ahead. one complaint is it, so it is early still it's in beta right and the only thing it wasn't buggy the only thing that made it feel beta was the uh i'd say because it's ability based like these magical spells based you kind of want more variety because if you got into a big fight there was like fire poison rocks and lightning ice. everywhere right and ice. Yep. there was like these they were just kind of everywhere and so i feel like as they go they'll probably start to add a couple more of these things and maybe some more uh differentiation yeah. between and that's my only complaint because the gameplay was smooth. It wasn't buggy. I wasn't clipping through doors like what happened in PUBG. Yes. Right. And so uh, it didn't feel buggy at all. But the, the lack of variety is probably the one thing that would get me. The last thing that I loved just on the way out was uh, if you are swapping out items, swapping out spells. So I have a I have a meet like a common fire spell. If I come across uh, an epic fire spell and I equip it, it's just like that. I just equip it. If I try on accident to now equip the common fire spell, it just straight up will not let me. And so in It'll terms you of downgrade, because like, why would you? Exactly. And so I think one of my gripes and the things that str you struggle with in these battle royale games is swapping, checking out loot, finding new loot and adding it. And, and, and oh, is this better? Is, is my gun better than this gun? If I ch this really narrows that down because you don't have to like compare better and worse. It's just so yeah. simple. It just wants it just to tells give you, you know, you already have a found. better one. You got it. Go, go kill somebody. And I'm like, cool. Cause I didn't want to sit staring at this chest for the next 30 seconds while I try to figure out the optimal build. It's just like, I'm going to mash a twice and move on. And it's really nice. Um, okay. So this is our last segment. I just, Peterson, you do it. You intro okay. this. Cause I, I so, love this. I, my kids have been home a lot, right? I've been home a lot. My kids have been home a lot. And so I've been seeing them play way too many video games. That's my fault, but I don't feel bad. So they've no. been playing a lot of online games, and I'm hearing some of their gaming insults. 
that they use. Ooh. And they're these new words that the kids are saying, uh, which makes me sound super old. But I had to ask them what some of them meant. Like, so for an example, which I've talked about before, is they're calling people defaults, right? Oh, you're a default, meaning you don't have any skins, which is an okay. insult because you're just using the default skin, right? Which, I mean, that does seem kind of insulting. Dude, you're such a default, yeah. and you're like, what do you, what do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. You little bastard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one, though, that I kept hearing my oldest son say is calling people sweaty. It's so like, oh, he's super sweaty. Oh, playing against some sweaty guys. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I know what that means in my personal life. Um, no. So they, they've been calling people sweaty, which apparently means like you play so many games, you're gross, like down in your basement, uh, you know, just being a sweaty fat kid, I guess. It's like the equivalent of that, like a basement dweller or a neck beard, maybe. But That's they deep, it, they cut, only call man. it that like if you're good like if you're really good at it they're like oh he's so sweaty and it's an insult I don't know uh, and so I was thinking what are some we should make up some new gaming insults that we can start calling people publicize it and let's make it happen so we yes. should create our own gaming insults yes because I if if we're good at one thing it's mocking people. Absolutely. And I'm not going to call somebody sweaty cuz I'm sweaty. <laughs> okay. Sweat um, right now, man. <laughs> who's got who's got who's got a good insult? Let's hear it. Who what are your insults? Go ahead. I've JD. got some basics. So oh. I've been playing a lot of battle royales. Uh okay, so one thing that I've noticed playing with my kids is kids are impatient, right? So when I play battle royale, I'm like, "Okay, hey, where am I going to dive that no people are going to be at?" They don't do that at all. They're like, okay, here's the path. Where's the closest city I can dive into, right? And so every freaking, like 90% of the kids playing Fortnite, uh, they dive early. They dive fast because they're so impatient. I'm calling them scoobs. Scoobs. Like scuba diver because they're scubas. They just dive straight down. They just dive right into it the second they get. So they're a bunch of scoobs. Okay. And I'm um, using it. I'm going to start using it. Dude, he's a, I'm not a scoob. I'm going to wait. Okay, so so one thing that has become less of a problem because so many games are cross-console now, but there are still games where if you have the game on PlayStation 4 and your buddy only has an Xbox, he can't play it with you because it's a PlayStation 4 exclusive or, you know, there's PC exclusives. So if you are one of these poor souls that only has one type of console, be it PlayStation or Nintendo Switch oh, or the PC, you're chained. You're chained to that console. So that's how you describe people. So, you're, oh, he can't play with us. He's chained. Of course he'd oh, say he's that. Chained. He's chained. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what an Xbox chain would say. Oh, oh you're just dude. a PlayStation chain? What oh, a my dummy. gosh. A PlayStation Why chain? would you chain a PlayStation? <laughs> oh for reals you're a pc <laughs> chain wow wow you're missing out does anyone pc chain anymore are you are you kidding me why wouldn't you just have an xbox <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually a stadia chain <laughs> <laughs> the worst kind of chain out there yeah, there's no worse chain than a stadia chain <laughs> okay i love chain i uh it's I love it. that's dirty that sounds gross. So, so I, I had a different, a different approach to uh, this whole insults because I was I was trying to think of like specific words. I couldn't think of any words, so I was thinking more of phrases of something uh, just just to cut deep down into somebody's soul, uh, just to kind of make them cry a little bit. Oh, you're going the mean route. Got it. Oh shit. Oh, yeah, man. Okay, so because like if you're going to any kind of insult, you might as well just cut deep, right? Just so, go all the uh, way. <laughs> Dude, I am so braced for the mean shit that Aaron's about to say, because what an Freaking intro. Cobra Kai over here. Strike hard, <laughs> strike first, strike fast. <laughs> so, yeah, what is it, Peter? Because, like, you know, when, when somebody kills you um, on on Warzone, like, you can, you, there's, like, a split second where they can just, like, 
you can hear what they say like when when you kill them mm-hmm. um so uh one is you aim like michael j fox on a roller coaster oh my gosh <laughs> wow I like that. <laughs> Going straight after kind the of. Fox man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, I didn't know Michael J. I mean, Fox I mean, plays Warzone. <laughs> he, so he, Aaron's he, going with roast style insults. <laughs> I like that. You aim like oh Michael J. God. Fox on a roller? I, I mean, Michael J. Fox is an American treasure. Let's all be real. Um, but, but there's no way he could shoot a gun from a roller coaster and hit anything. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Okay, oh, no. how about how about calling people Tokyos? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so you know, a lot of people are dealing with this. It's too, it, it, people are dealing with the Nintendo Switch drift. Yeah. So you're fighting. You're playing against someone on on uh, Fortnite, right? And the character just keeps running off to the left, and you can't ever hit him. They're drifting. They're Tokyo drifting, man. Oh, they're Tokyos. Tokyo Fucking drift. Tokyos. Mm. Fucking Tokyos. Tokyos drifting all over the place. Can never hit them. Can't run straight. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, I can't play one of my one of my Switch controllers Tokyoing on me. Oh my gosh. Is Tokyo? I was on like, me? what else do I do? I was like, what? What is a good Fast and the Furious insult? And I was, or like, what's good word association? You can't say I was like, drift. drifting. You can't say drift. Already the word. So you can't say Tokyo drift. So you got to go Tokyos. Tokyo's. Um, okay, let's see if you guys can get this. Tum tum. Tum tum. Does that ring a bell? Tum tum. Well, yeah. This is tum tum is... from. Yeah, I got nothing. Oh, tum tum. It's a kids' movie, right? Yes. And this is a throwback. So, tum tum was the. Wait, 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 wait. The, wait, the fucking. Wait! The three ninjas! Yes. <laughs> yes. No way. Tum Tum okay. the three ninjas. So here's, wow. I know That's it's a throwback, school, but listen, I'm you call a someone ninja. a Tum Tum and here's what it means. They are those people who are their, their name. Uh, and you see this a lot on rocket league. Uh, their name is like uh, twitch TV dot whatever slash butt ninja or whatever they're called. So, yeah, well, that's what they always are. So, uh, it's these wannabe ninjas. Ninja, the streamer, everyone wants to be ninja, especially everyone playing these Battle Royale games. And they're trying too hard. They've got their Twitch address as their screen name. They're obviously streaming. They've got, like, five viewers. You call them yeah. Tum Tum. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, Tum Tum? Because he's a wannabe ninja. He's not a real ninja. He's a wannabe. Wow. <laughs> wow. Peterson, this is the best one so far. Tum Tum? Like for up and coming yeah. streamers? Yes. You're a Tum Tum. Oh, okay, Aaron, what's your latest roast? What am okay. I going to I got to hear the next one. Okay so, awesome. so, okay. so actually, I came up with, with uh, more of your format. So see, see if you can guess this one. Crisscross. Those jumpers. The jumpers. The people who man. jump the jump the whole time they play. Oh my gosh. I hate jumpers. Those bastards. That's me too. It's one thing that just irritates the shit out of me. The, it, even if there's no tactical uh they're advantage, jumping. they're just jumping. Mm-hmm. So crisscross. Dude. Those criss Dude, that's for- jumping. Fortnite, there's a tons tons of crisses, tons of crosses. Fortnite is full of these guys because uh, you don't fight without jumping. Because yep. spell break is just a big long jump, and you can't just constantly be like <laughs> bunny hopping. Nope. Spell break got rid of the crossies, the crisscross. Which I've talked about this before. I hate the jumping in shooting games because it Kills makes me. no sense. How do you jump right. and shoot a gun? You just—it's right. not going to work, guys. It's—it's it's like Michael J. Fox on a roller coaster trying to shoot a gun. <laughs> well, and you just end up shooting them in the dick, man. And I feel that's just not cool. I'm I mean, you can't shoot guys in the dick. <laughs> um, okay, here's here's a good one. So you are in the unfortunate situation of either being unemployed or you can't find the part. Apparently, P 
PSUs, that is the power supply unit of a PC, in certain places, you cannot find a new PSU for like a reasonable price. Uh, there have been all sorts of, of different uh, supply chains that have been upset to the point that like you just can't get certain computer parts for a reasonable price. So if you're one of these unfortunate people that can't upgrade your PC right now for whatever situation, and you're stuck back in the Stone Age, and you can't get out, you're a caveman. Yep. You're Dude, one of these the unfortunate new... people that can't, you can't upgrade your PC, you can't get the new technology, and you're just stuck in your cave. Fucking caveman. I was caveman. Kick, kick the hamster, right? This is yeah. Like, oh, hey. Yeah. hey, ca- Oh, we got a caveman on our team. It's the guy who's just lagging all the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I had a, I had two, three more, I think, but just ones real quick. You can co- start calling people numb fingers. You know, we've got uh, numb skull, numb nuts, numb fingers is the gamer version of that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, oh, so this is what this is what you would call someone who we would consider a casual gamer. Because they have a full time job and they can't game all day, <laughs> you, you call them a gravy. <laughs> because because they're graveyard shift gamers, they only co- the gravies come out at night. They're not good. They think they're good, but they're not because they're working their full time job during the day. Bunch of gravies. And they're tired, so they're going to just phone it in. They're coming straight out of the graveyard like a bunch of fucking dead people. And they they get to play like two hours maybe a day. (laughs) These these casual gravies. And all the guys that don't have jobs or kids that have been playing 12 hours a day, they're like, fucking gravies. Uh, Thanks for boosting my (laughs) stats, you gravies. (laughs) Man, are we writing these all down? These are fucking legit. We should just start using these. I am going to start using these. My last one. Okay, you kill a guy in a game, and he's got a few seconds where he can see his body. And, you know, the thing was you'd go up and teabag him, right? (laughs) Teabag overdone. Okay? Especially because of that two seconds of audio you get after you kill someone in Warzone. And there, it's always like every time it's it's uh, somebody swearing almost every time, right? You kill them and they're like, "Us!" and they'll swear, say a say something horrible. Um, and I get so happy every time I hear it. But instead of doing the tea bag, you're going to do the ambulance, where you go um, stand over their body, you point up straight up in the air, and you spin around in a circle. <laughs> it's like the ambulance, right? Whee! Yeah, and you just do the ambulance. It's gonna piss them off. I guarantee it. It'll take a minute for them to figure out what you're doing, but once it catches uh-huh. on, do the ambulance. Come pick up their dead body. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got one last one. Um, bindles. <laughs> so oh, this is gonna be are- interesting. There are people, uh, myself, I, I am very, de- I'm very guilty of being a bindle. There are people that only play free to play games, like free to play games are low level to low barrier to entry. You can get in. If you don't like it, you haven't spent any money on it. So it's like, whatever, there are a ton of free to play games out here. It's a very common model. So if you're a person who's just jumping from one free to play game to another, like a hobo jumping from one box car to the next. You're just packing up your bindle and you're going from one free play game to another free to play game. <laughs> you have like you're a max 20, 30 hours in each of them. You're oh, a bindle. max. <laughs> and you're like, all right, that's enough. Ne- on to the next one. And your whole computer desktop just looks like a bunch of free to play games. And all the developers are sitting there like, God, I hate these fucking bindles. You've got case- whales. And you got bindles. Dude, in case you don't know what a bindle in real life is, oh, a bindle Sorry, is, the, is the <laughs> – in the old cartoons, you see the hobo <laughs> with, like, a little pouch at the end of his stick, and all of his belongings are in – I guess I guess the modern-day version is a shopping cart, right? But yes. he's got the stick with the little pouch with his stuff in it. That thing is called a bindle. 
and he carries it around. Man, dude, I'm telling you, if there's anyone under like 25 that listens to this podcast that didn't grow up on like Hanna Barbera cartoons, <laughs> they're gonna have no fucking idea what we're talking what are you about. Talking about <laughs> what the fuck is a hobo? What? I don't know. It sounds offensive. You can't call people hobos. No, it's a thing. We call people hobos all the time. No, it's the fine. hobos carry a bindle, and they're like, "What are you British? <laughs> you sound like you're speaking British." um does anyone else have any more before we uh close it off with dice of destiny no i think we're we're all right okay let's do it dice 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 of destiny all right dice of destiny is the fun little game we like to play at the end of every episode we roll a 20-sided dice to pick a genre we roll a six-sided dice to pick a price and then we roll a- another six-sided dice to see who has to find a game in that genre for that price pick it play it review it and this last week i rolled a dark game for under 50 dollars um i only spent 20 on a game called sunless sea this bindle Sunless over here only spent 20 bucks. It's a real bindle move. Well, if you guys want to really bindle, it's on sale right now for like $1 <laughs> off. Oh, no, just kidding. Oh, it was it, oh, the base price was only $19. I didn't even get all the way up to ton- 20 I have an nice. extra dollar to spend on an extra bindle bag. Was it 1998 or <laughs> 1998? <laughs> so uh, here's the thing is this game has very positive reviews. And it's a survival game, and I've been playing a lot of survival games lately, so I thought, yeah, this is right up my alley. It is kind of a steampunk slash Lovecraftian game world uh, in which London, the city of London, has been kidnapped by bats. I, I'm i trying to keep They up. kidnapped the so city? They kidnapped the city, and now they it's underwater? They stole the city? And now know. it's kind of underwater but not underwater necessarily because you still navigate the water in the ocean wait bats took something underwater oh yeah i don't know man it's fucking crazy so the (laughs) story i actually is was kind of a initially it was a knit for me because i didn't know what the hell was going on they just drop you in like you just start playing the game like frostpunk has an intro ftl has an intro they explain the story they explain what's going on just that opening card with a paragraph of text telling you what's happening sunless sea none of that instead you get a journal with i don't know like Twenty thousand words worth of content that you just like flip through. <laughs> Get a novel, and it's a lot of reading. I told you guys, Novella. I knew going into this, this was a lot of reading, and I'm not complaining about it. The reading was fine. I knew what I was getting into, um, and so I do all my reading. I've read my homework. I take a few pop quizzes. Uh, I turn in a twelve page paper, and I can finally start playing the game. So the core game is you are navigating a top down ship. Uh, So ship from the top down view around this map and you depart from uh, underwater London or whatever the fuck it's called. Fallen London, fallen London. Um, And you just kind of navigate around the world. You obviously run into sea monsters, bats, fucking bats. Uh, You find (laughs) different ports, different islands, and then you can go to port. You can explore these stories. You can do missions. You can accomplish side uh, quests. And that's kind of the gameplay loop is you're exploring, you're, uh, you're reading, you're, uh, you're, you're um, finding out stories and, and solutions to their uh, side quests and all these things. <sighs> it sounds on paper like something I should like. It really should be something I like. Um, the story is not spoon fed to you. And the slow drip that you get it in is actually fairly satisfying because you are rewarded for exploring. You are rewarded for finding new things around the world. And I'm like, that's dope. I'm I'm kind of into that. However, the gameplay itself was so punishing, even for a survival game. And you know, I'm playing some pretty punishing survival games. It was too much. Um, obviously, I'm I'm not representative i don't speak for the survival game community because the 
reviews for this game on Steam are just stellar. And I think if people that like survival games really liked it. So I think I am more of a casual survival game player, honestly. But the re- I say it's too punishing because you had to manage so many resources. So, for example, my ship, I had to keep track of the health of the ship because the hull was always getting damaged by monsters. I had to keep track of my fuel and my fuel drained so fast. It was stressful just watching it drain nonstop. Like I could not move without losing like so much of it. I have to keep food on board. I had a crew of 10. We ate nine of them. Uh, and we still starve to death, which I'm like, that seems especially sick. Imagine starving to death after you'd eaten nine people. You're like, what the fuck was the point of eating those people? Um, and then you also have to maintain uh, sanity. Like your crew will go insane uh, if you don't keep the lights on. However, if you keep the lights on, then you're more of a target for monsters that will then come and destroy your ship. So it's very easy to die. It's very easy to run out of uh, food or run out of fuel or run out of any of these things. And then even if you find a port, you're not free because it's not like, oh, I'll find a port and then I can buy some fuel. You find a port and you don't have any fucking money. And you're like, oh, well, you everything is random. You don't know where anything is. And by the time you find a port, you could very well have found a port that doesn't have a shop. Or you could find a port that doesn't have any of your, your missions there. So you have no way of making money. And you have spent all of your fuel getting to that port. And now you're struck. You're stuck. And then if you die, you start back over at Fallen London. You don't have any of your map. So you don't know where anything was. And you don't have really anything. So instead of being a game where, like, at least when you die, you're like, oh, I have this, that, or the other. You die and you're like, you can choose to retain one thing. So you can retain your map exploration. You can retain your money. You can retain your fuel, your knowledge. You can retain these things. uh, And then you start over again. And so it gets to the point where if you're not choosing to retain your map knowledge, you will lose that every time you die. And that seems like to me, the most valuable information. I don't know, man. It's, it's like I died right away. And unlike in faster than light, when I die, I'm like, cool, let's start another game or in Frostpunk where I, my city blows up. I'm like, all right, let's start again and see how I can do it. Right. When I died in this sunless sea, I just had no desire to try again. I was like, Ugh. So ultimately the game had a lot of promise and it was very, very clearly it was a very well thought out game and designed for a different audience that isn't me, uh, an audience that <laughs> yeah. absolutely adored it. So for me, this is a wait for a sale game because at 1899, it's pretty steep for the types of games I normally play. Um, And even if you are waiting for a sale, I should put that caveat, wait for a sale if you are a survival game lover. Otherwise, do not play this game because it is, it's like the most survivaliest survival game ever. I wouldn't say it's like an introduction to survival games. I wouldn't start people on this, this one. So, uh, yeah. That that's what I'd say. Sunless Sea. You can find it on Steam. I think it's on a few consoles as well. It is nineteen bucks, and I would say maybe not worth it. Maybe wait for a sale. So yeah, yeah that probably sounds. I think that's a good review, a fair review. This game knows that it's punishing, and it doesn't try to hide that fact. Yeah, and like I will never fault a game for being unabashedly what it is. Um, because I think there's always an audience for that. Um right. it's just I it's just not me. I'm not that audience. Okay, so that means we have a re-roll, and uh we will start with a D20 on Google. We got a 16, and a 16 is backlog. Ooh, did we just oh, add this one? Dang. Nope. Yeah, that one's pretty that one's uh we haven't had this one before and it was one of our newer additions. Okay, dope. So somebody has to play a backlog game. Um so the price doesn't matter, right? This is a game you already own. You are you have to already own it and not have played it and it's on your backlog of games you want to play. Okie doke. Okay, so for the rolls, um, can I just, can we do a four-sided dice and I will just take one? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you can just do a six-sided hey, dice, and you take no, one. Six sided, yeah. I'm sorry. Math at this point is not my You take your one. I'm two, three. Aaron, you want to be four, five? Sure. And then six okay. is just roll again. And a two. Is that All you, right, Peterson? Here we go. Here we go. I've got a healthy backlog. I was gonna say, your backlog is a mile long. <laughs> so <laughs> that is uh, true. Best of luck to you on that. Sweet. I'm going to play Witcher 3. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Dude, don't kid on that. That would be dope. That would be a dope. I would love to hear a Dice of Destiny review for Witcher 3 in oh, four weeks when you finish it. <laughs> when I finish it? I'll never finish it. <laughs> I'll get sucked into like the hunting or something, and then I'll be like, well, I played 150 hours, and I'm 25% the way through the game. Um. Okay, there is no fishing in The Witcher 3 unless you have mods, Peterson. So I think you'll be okay. Oh, I think sweet. You I'm going to add okay. the fishing mod. Here, hold on. Yeah. Right now. Actually, I just have been playing Witcher 3 just for the fishing. I just I thought it was a great fishing sim. <laughs> All right, guys, that does it for us this week. To play us out, we have some music from Crucible, the game you should not play. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you guys want to check us out on Discord, if you want to check us out, we're on Facebook and Twitter as well. Or you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 3BG. I'm JD, logging off. This is Peterson going AFK. This is Aaron rolling out. Peterson Productions. Oh, yeah.